Welcome to Selco TV and our Circulation 2 training. This is Rachel Gray talking a little bit about Web Reporter today. To get started with, you want to make sure that you're in Internet Explorer to use Web Reporter. Um, Web Reporter has been optimized for this browser and sometimes you may find that some reports do not run correctly or you might not get the correct information. Um, it won't filter, etc. with the other web browsers. So please make sure you're using Internet Explorer. And in the address bar you can just type in reports.selco.info. And from here you want to click Horizon Reports. And then you can type in your login. If you need login information, feel free to contact us at the help desk and we will be more than happy to get you that. I mentioned that you need Internet Explorer for this um, website, those reports. You also probably need to make sure that your browser is in compatibility mode and we have sent out emails and have posted on our website ways to get into compatibility mode for this. If you have any questions, um, again, contact us at the help desk and we'll give you a hand with that. So I'm at Web Reporter. I've logged in. I want to go under Shared Reports. And here's the listing of the different folders that the shared reports are under. Each login uh, profile, like I'm using Circ th or School 3 for this one demonstration, but we also have Public 1, 2, and 3, and School 1, 2, and 3. Um, they all have the same reports that are available, but they do um, sometimes look a little bit different, so just be aware of that. So I'm going to go and just give you a brief overview and show you a couple of the reports that might be the most helpful for you in your uh, library. And I'm going to start with going into the library administration folder. And I'm going to be looking at the local request table. And before I do that, you do get a nice brief description um, in Web Reporter for each of the individual reports. So you can kind of see, okay, local request table lists the local request lines for a location. And this is pulling directly out of Horizon. So today I am interested to see what uh, local request lines Owatonna has in the database. So I click Owatonna, push it over to selected, and I get their results. They've got a nice brief line here. You can see the collection code, the local request I type the number of days before it rolls over to the permanent collection and permanent eye type. Nice and easy there. And if you need to decide that you want to update any of this information, let us know. We'd have, we'd love to help you out with that. Some other things under library administration is the library hours and close dates. This might be very helpful um, to verify that you, what is in Horizon is actually correct for your location. And let's go to Cannon Falls and take a look at this. I'm not going to fill in anything for the exception dates, beginning and ending range. I just am interested to see what they have for this year. So I'm going to run document. And this pulls again out of Horizon. And you can see that currently these are the open dates that are listed and the closed dates that are on file for them for 2014. So if you um, need to verify and make sure that you're going to be closed on the Friday after Thanksgiving in Horizon, this would be the place to come and take a look at that. Under Library Administration there are lots of other um, goodies as well, including CERC parameters and privileges and the like. So feel free to come here and poke around a bit, do some exploring. Back to shared reports, and now I'm going to take a look at borrower reports. This is a very powerful tool in that it will be able to bring you up a wide variety of information. Everything from counting borrowers by B stat or B type, um, also a generic borrower count and a generic borrower list. So you can actually get a listing of all of your patrons with um, their address and contact information. So if you want to email all of your patrons um, about an upcoming program, you can go into that to do so. 
You can also see expired borrowers and the like. I'm actually going to do a generic borrower count. And I'm going to go to Selco. I'm just typing in the first part of our location code. And I am going to pick B type. And just the BVS. So just patrons that Selco in the office has. We've got 27 people listed as um, staff, basically, in Horizon. We have some cleanup reports as well, including location um, information here for bad CICO. As you know, uh, if you're getting funding from either a city or a county, you'll get from one or the other. You will not get it from both. So we do need to make sure that the each borrower record has just one of those um, kind of B stats. You can also get borrowers with no phone numbers, no addresses and the like if you need to go and clean up that information and contact patrons uh, to make sure that your records are complete. Just for demonstration purposes, I am going to pick out borrowers with no addresses, pick a location, and you can see that Dodge Center is really, really good, and they don't have anything in this um, report. So all of their patrons have addresses. I'm going to go into back to shared reports now and go to circulation. And this is a nice way to be able to get information for your boards for any kind of um, publicity. So if you want to advertise, you know, last year at our summer reading program, we had this much circ. might be a good place to go and take a look at that. I'm going to take a look at the checkout overview filtered by location. I just really like this here. Let's go to Austin and run report. And this uh, gives you a nice graph for annual reports for your boards. And we'll break it down by month, as you can see here. So we can see that in March of 2013, we had 19,000 uh, books get checked out. Almost 1,000 of those were renewed over the phone. 461 were renewed probably in person and 2500 were reviewed renewed on the o I OPAC on the online and you can also see over time that um, like here's March 2013 and March 2014 and you can easily compare it with the graphs it's really kind of a nice powerful overview and of course they can do the same thing with check in as well There is also a claimed returned report, and this will let you go and look on your shelves to see what items were claimed returned so you can see if anything was actually just missed when they were scanning in the check-in items. And I'm going to do the collection code of book fiction. And this report does take a little bit longer than some of the other ones we've done, just because it's looking at a lot more lines in Horizon. And here we can see the item that it's claimed returned. And here we have the call number and the title of the item. So we can see that the host was returned, was claimed returned, and uh, we can go and look for it on the shelf. So this, these are all BFs, book fictions. And we only have 44 data rows, so doing pretty good there. You do also have the borrower name and phone number. Um, those, of course, are blacked out here for this video uh, to protect that private information. There's also this generic statistics report, generic stats. 
and this will allow you to filter and make basically the report that would work best for your library. And for my demonstration here, I'm going to do Grand Meadow. I'm going to take a look at the just the check in and check out. So I'm hitting the shift button to select more than one and moving them both over to the selected. And let's see how we're doing so far for July. And I can see that at Grand Meadow here, I have had over a thousand check-ins, so, and uh, 129 of those were overdue or late. And for checkouts, I have had 914 things go out, and then renewals um, are these bottom three numbers here. It does total that information here, just so you're aware of that. So, it doesn't just total the check in and then total the check out unless you run those separately. So that's a little bit of circulation. I'm going to go into the overdues folder now. And we have a My Patrons with Items Overdue Sense report that can be very handy. Let's just take a look at Albert Lee. Today minus one week for items due is a good thing. And we'll just run that report here. This one's going to probably take a little bit longer than some of the other ones, just because of um, how many things it's looking at. And here you can have the patron name and their phone number, and then the items that are overdue. And also it'll tell you how many days those items are overdue. It's kind of nice to be able to get an idea of the trends for individual patrons this way. Also, like I know schools run a very similar report called My Students and Staff with Items Overdue Sense, and they use that for the end of the school year uh, to try to get all of the items back in, and they'll have a listing of this up on the bulletin board or whatever, so that um, John Doe knows that they need to get that book back. And running back to shared reports, I'm going to show you just a little bit about the requests and ILL folder. And this folder is very handy because it lets you see not only your hold shelf list, so you can take a look at the items that should be on your hold shelf currently. And again, you get the borrower name. You get to see how long the hold is uh, active for, so the hold expiration date, and how their notices went out. So if you want to see that legacies is on your shelf, you need to see how long it needs to be there is um, July 28th and so you know that you can go in and um, this patron received their notification via email or via, via regular mail or the librarians called them but it'll tell you here that it's mail SMS text messaging and the like another really nice couple of reports here is the ILL borrowing count and the ILL lending count by date range and these reports kind of run and work in tandem so you can get an idea of your net borrowing and your net lending. So we're going to go into the ILL borrowing count report and let's pick a school. I'm just curious to see how they may compare here. So let's go to Austin High School and this is the borrowing count. So this is the report that will bring you the number of items that you're borrowing from other locations. The end date for range is actually the first item in this report, so you want to make sure that you're filling in that correct information correctly. And then the beginning date, <clears throat> excuse me, let's just see how they did for the January to June. And if you flip those, the only thing you'll see is uh, uh, there's no items for this report. Make sure that your filters are correct because it is, um, it doesn't really have anything there that I can look at. It doesn't tell you that you did it wrong, it just tells you that there's no item. So make sure that you, that's the first thing you look at after you get that result. And you can see the items that they are borrowing from other locations, by location. And if you go to the last page, you get a total. So they had 207 items coming to their users. And if I did the lending for the same school, 
On this one, the beginning date is first. I have no idea why it has to be that way. I think it's just to keep us all on our toes. So January to June, they had 339 items go out to other locations. So nice way to be able to kind of get an idea of how your library is doing with that. You can export this information. Uh, you can do that by going up to File and Export. You can choose if you only want the portion displayed or the whole report and you can do Excel or plain text. Excel is probably the best way to do it so that way you can look at it in Excel, manipulate the data however you need to, and the like. And just so we can see what it looks like, I'm just going to open this instead of saving it first. And here I can see that same information I just looked at. And luckily it tells me that this is the lending report at the top. You can do that with any of these reports, uh, so it's nice and easy to get the information and manipulate it. Look at what you need to look at. Maybe ignore or delete the column that you might not need, etc. So thank you very much for watching this episode of Selco TV on Web Reporter for Circulation 2 training. We look forward to seeing you again on our next episode.